Hi, I'm Chan Seok from South Korea. In this time, I'm going to talk about the dark silicon problem. Here is the outline. First of all, I briefly mentioned about the basic principle to understand the problem. You may understand this if you take the online class of week 3, which handles more slows and then are scaling. After that, I will talk about what the dark silicon problem is and then show few state-of-art solutions for this problem. Uh, okay. As, a, as you know, the Moore's law, Gordon Moore in Intel, predicts the technology development process, such as the number of the transistors on chip will be increased in double every technology node. Intel defined this node as a 18 months. So, this is a graph for showing the relationship between the number of transistors and the processors. So, on, until the 2000s, uh, 2000s, the in, in, increment of transistor uh, is linearly. But look at this area and take a look at closely. So, uh, in this graph, you can see that almost every processor stocks in 10 billion transistors. And Intel redefines the technology node as a 36 months. Why is this happening? Um, I will talk about this in a later. So now, let's talk about the Denard scaling. Robert Denard of the IBM defines scaling factor like this. And scaling factor was almost scale root 5, which is almost 0.7. You can see this factor in the class. And, and, then, his, and then his paper can also calculate the scaling factor of power performance from the formula. The important point is that if we want to increase the speed of transistor, the power density is remained constant. So, uh, Moore's law makes sense because of this. While the more transistors are integrated, the power density is re still remained. So we can consider only scaling factor for development of chip. For example, if we try to reduce the gate length, we can also decrease the drain voltage and thickness of oxide, and then we can also increase the speed of transistor. Oh, this is a graph for the NAR scaling. In this graph, as gate length is decreased, uh, you can see right to left, as gate length is decreased, the thickness of oxide and voltage will also decrease. But it is just ideal scaling. In real situation, like this. As you can see this, it regulate the uh, I violate the uh, scaling uh, scaling. The scaling re relationship is broken because of the gate leakage current and reliability. Also, we can get additional performance at higher voltage. Uh, this is good effect for us, but previous one is, n is not good for us. So we need to consider this region. Here is the simple example. To, to maintain the power density, while we increase the number of transistors by Moore's law and the speed, uh, the transistor should have a lower capacitance and voltage. Uh, but as I mentioned right before, the relationship is broken 
and the thickness of oxide is no longer decreased. So uh, the drain voltage cannot lower than before. So like this. So as a result, the uh, the density factor does not constant. As a result, when we increase the number of transistor, the ratio between power density and the area will also increase. That's bad effect for us. You can see this phenomenon in the 130 nanometer process. So, uh, in mid 2000s, the multi core development trend is like that. Uh, and everyone just integrate many cores in one chip. For example, the symmetry multiprocessor. So, for example, if you want to make a 4 core processor in 65 nanometer process, we think that we can make 16 cores in 32 nanometer process because of Moore's law. But actually, if we consider the summer design power and the performance, we cannot make it. To maintain the power density, we must fix the number of cores with full performance, or uh, double the number of cores with half performance. You can see this color. So white color is full power, and well, dark color is just turned up. After that, the remain cores uh, will be dark or dimmed. This is called dark silicon phenomena. So, while we scale the processor, the dark region will be grown up due to the limitation of denial scaling. Uh, this is a slide from the uh, ITRS 2008. So, uh, as you can see, this while we increase the process, the dark region will be grown up. That's why we stuck in technology limitation. There is some solutions for dark silicon. Actually, the old-fashioned solution is turbo mode. You may heard of this if you're interested in overclocking, such as Interspace Step and AMD's Turbo Boost. But uh, it is required enough uh, summer design power to operate this, so we cannot always enable this. The ultimate way for solution is the heterogeneous system architecture is a acronym of the HSA. Oh, if you have interested in gaming, you may heard about this. That's because AMD tried to implement this in the graphic API called Mantle. Oh, the key concept of HSA is that core is separated into two features such as GPU plus CPU or CPU inside and host lab cores. After that, some cores fill dark silicon and the remain cores operate the task. Then, performance will be maintained and high efficient, has a high efficiency. You can see more details in the dark silicon website. So, uh, Dark silicon topic is the famous in nowadays. So uh, the citation of the uh, paper, uh, citation of the main paper related on the dark silicon is very high. So we, we the person who are interested in the designing processors should consider about this uh, dark silicon problem. So finally, we arrived at the conclusion. In nowadays, 
The meaning of more slow and the not scaling is quite changed. The power density factor is not constant anymore. So, uh, if we want to try the designing chip, we need to consider the power elements. Power is the one of the most considerable element for chip designing. But uh, through the designing, uh, everyone stuck in the utilization world. Uh, this this t principle, I didn't explain it, but it's almost same as the dark silicon. And while trying to implement the process technology, uh, uh, the dark silicon problem will be held. So we should find some solutions. One of the reasonable answer is the heterogeneous system architecture. So. Uh, through this, we can get high performance for parallelism, load balancing, and very important, energy efficiency. Uh, actually, I'm graduate student in computer science, and I'm trying to study about the operating system uh, based on the many core. Uh, especially on the power management is our my topic. So, I, I think the dark silicon problem is quite similar with our, uh, my topic. So, I choose this dark silicon problem as a project topic. Okay, here's the reference for uh, made this slide. You can see many uh, informations for dark silicon uh, through this web page slides and movies okay that's all for today thanks for watching uh, i hope everyone to have understanding this phenomena thanks